What up, what up? Welcome to the Land Your Bet Sports betting live stream. We're about to go live here, waiting for a few people to jump in, looking at what you guys want to look at per usual. Going to be taking a look at some of the bets that you guys have. I've got a couple of things I already know that I want to look at that I haven't yet. So we got to see about that. But like I said, let me let some people jump in real quick and we'll get going into what you guys have. I, it says it right there at the bottom. Let me know what you want to talk about as well. Like I said, I do have two picks that I want to jump into. So we're going to get into those real quick. Uh, there is a video already up with best bets that I've already made. I've got four of them, five if you include uh, two totals from the same game that we've got going on. So make sure you jump in there and get those as well. But as always, jump in those comments. Let me know what you guys got. I'm going to take a look at my first uh, player prop that I haven't put a bet in for yet and see if we do like it. I think there's two of them that I think I'm probably going to end up betting on here in a minute and put that card together for you guys. I will be showing the card as well as always as soon as we get the uh, as soon as we get the uh, the bets made here that we want. Nate doesn't jump on these uh, these live streams with me, Rockstar. Appreciate you asking about him. Uh, definitely want to get him on here to show us his process as well, which I happen to know a lot about. Haven't been his co-host for a few years on the lines.com. Uh, but yeah, he doesn't jump into these with me. So I'm going to get into uh, the way I do it here, which is go through exactly how we get the bets that we get, right? So let me pull up a couple of these sites that we know we use. And yeah, what's up, Aiden? Yeah, we, we play underdog for sure. I wrote an article yesterday for the lines.com about the uh, the underdog plays that I, I, I have because uh, that is available to me where I'm at. But let me know if you have anything from underdog that you want to talk about. Uh, sometimes those lines cannot lie. And maybe if they were a sponsor, I wouldn't say this. But sometimes I don't appreciate those underdog lines for real. Uh, if you compare them to the other books, like let me let me pull one up if I can in a minute. But I want to go through one thing that I want to look at first before you guys start jumping in and ask me about the, the plays that you have and on your card or want to put on your card that you don't yet have. Um, so the first one I'm going to be looking at, what's up, Crack Sparrow? First one I'm going to be looking at is, let's see real quick. Let's get into Jalen Duran. I'm going to start with props.cash. I'm going to share this screen with you guys so you can see what's good. But props.cash is going to be the place that I'm often starting to at least, I mean, they got a lot of stuff on there that's like one-stop shop, you know? So I, I love starting right over there. But that's what I'm going to use to show you Mr. Jalen Duran, let me get to the right one here. Let's look at that Detroit game, Miami, right? Because my first thought when I started looking here was like, all right, let's see if we can get any overinflated props from these uh, from these Pistons players to see what's up with them for uh, for some unders is kind of what I was looking at. So with Duran, there's a couple of things that jump out the off the bat to me when we look at his rebounds, right? 11 and a half boards is what we got right here. That's high against a Miami team that we know is going to play super slow. We know that they're going to be able to limit what the other uh, what the other centers want to do, especially with Bam down there. And the other thing, too, is his matchup with Bam, right? If Bam is going to be a dude that has the ball in his hands a lot, which we know he will be as a point center at times, then we can kind of bank on the fact that that uh, Duran's going to have to be pulled a little bit away from the basket based on where Bam is shooting from, which is often like right around the free throw line, slightly in, but even a little bit further away at times, right? So... For this one, we're going to start with just looking at his. I mean, we know that his stuff's going to be going crazy. So I actually have a couple of things I wanted to look at. First one for him is his profile. Let's just look at his 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 um his profile up here on courtside pal and see exactly how a true center because this man plays center like most centers have always played it. Uh, unlike some of the other centers that they list as a center in this league and never play with their back to the basket and on, and like never really uh, do much else around the basket because they're so busy shooting threes guys like even Ke Kelly Olynyk, uh, maybe some Wendell Carter Jr. At times, I'm not sure if I consider them that, but if we look at Duran's rebounding against Miami, we're gonna have to go pretty far down, right? So they're going to be the fifth best team at limiting his type of rebounder from getting boards, which is just a true center. Um, let's look at real quick some of the, the recent centers and what they've done against him. So we go down here on props.cash, go to boards, which we're on, and go to centers. Last time he played, he had 10. Joker got 11. So nobody's gotten 11 here. We got Domas. He's not. What is Domas? Domas is a monster. Uh, Domas is the only one that's done it here since the end of February, really, since the break, right? There's, there's one center we're talking about getting those 12 boards that you would need. Oh, I'm sorry. And then Jokic got the, the boards the other night. So Joker did it once. Domas did it once. Nobody else did it, including Gaff, uh, including Duran. Let me look at the, the matchup from last game and see if we, like what his rebound chances, rebound chances were at. So if this game was on 3-5, I'm going to go back to these stats real quick. Go to players. Look at the tracking and rebounds. And pull those up for exactly that date that they play, which was 3-5, March the 5th. 
bro, I was on vacation during March the 5th. That was awesome. Detroit. <laughs> and then we look at what he did that day. What do you have? 12? 12 rebound chances that game. 10 of them that he boarded. That's a very high rebound chance rate uh, for anybody, even a good rebounder like our man Duran here. So that already tells me maybe there weren't that many possessions in that game. I'm going to go to um, the exact box score of that game and look at what they had real quick in that one. If you go to Miami or Detroit, where's Miami at? They're all the way down here at 16th in the league. Go to that advanced box score so I can click right into when they played Detroit real recently on the 5th and see what that looked like for the matchup. So if we go to matchups here, uh, and also, Oscar Thompson wasn't that game. That's something that I do want to mention is that Oscar Thompson being out does mean that uh, Durang has gotten more, but we'll talk about that as well. So, yeah, it was a BAM matchup. We knew that was going to be the case, right? Uh, he doesn't really score much against BAM, which you would expect. Uh, BAM is going to continue to be a really good defender on, on Durang, not giving up too much weight and size. So, that's helpful. So, I, I think that is a play. That's the first one I am adding to the card for real is, is Jalen Durang under. There's just not enough rebounds to go around. The, the two times that he played without Oscar Thompson, he went crazy, but I want to bring up why. Without Osar Thompson this season on Stat Muse, if you're following along, that is uh, Stat Muse here. Aiden asked a really good question I want to answer about Outlier and Prop.Cash in a second, but look at who he played when he got those boards. He got 10 against Charlotte without Oscar. He got 23 versus Toronto. So that's way overinflated. In fact, that was his last game, which is another reason why I think this is way overinflated is who has the cojones to take an under on a Jalen Duran rebound prop with me because that's going on the card i'm telling you right now uh i'm gonna put that up right now before i even forget it while i'm doing that and i'm trying to uh i'm trying to multitask here talking about props.cash and outlier there's a couple of reasons i like props.cash a little bit better uh than outlier and it's just a little bit of honestly it really just comes down to like the outline uh, of the whole thing the layout the way that they they have everything displayed for you there's a couple other things that i do think are available on uh props.cash they're not available on outlier are you already gonna have me signed in? But it really it comes down to a preference, honestly. Like I, I wouldn't really sweat it too much. If you whatever you can get on props.cash, you really can get on uh on outlier as well. Uh in fact, outlier has a few more things that like in terms of the explanation, uh, which you can see using the charts on props.cash. That's why I don't really care about it. Uh, but if we go to if we're on outlier, I don't need to go to my picks, my bad. And we just go to get, get out of here. We got trends right here. Sort by where are the games at? Obviously, this has been updated like a hundred times and since I was on it, but you could tell I don't even use it. So I'm not going to try to go through with you right now because this is actually completely different than the last time I even pulled it up, which was probably like a month ago. You're just going to, it's just a preference thing. So just to be clear, like I, I wouldn't say that one's a worse, uh, you know, prospect for, for finding stuff than the other. But yeah, to finish the point there, I am putting Jalen Duran under on the card. Isn't that crazy? Like, this might end up being one of the worst bets if you, if you feel it, but 12 rebound chances against Miami as of late. The other things I was looking at, Miami rebounds per game allowed. Uh, obviously, that's going to be one of the, some of the fewest to them. If you look at the way that Jalen Duran scores, also percentage points of, of off second chance stuff, right? So he's going to need to get offensive boards, and I'm very confident that uh, Miami is not giving up too many rebounds. Let's look at their re defensive rebound percentage to start. Yeah, it's sixth best in the league, right? And they're so they're they're really not missing shots. Uh, or they're not missing opportunities to get those defensive boards. Their shooting has been pretty bad. Let's see if it's improved at all. Maybe over the last ten games compared to the rest of the season, based on who they play. Too, I haven't looked at that. No, nah, they've been bad at shooting. So there might be some rebound chances, but you can also see obviously their pace is always going to be near the bottom of the league, twenty third in the last ten. If you look at all season segments and their pace, where are they at? third slowest right so that's on average how they're going to play and i think that's what you can kind of bank on so I, I am adding that to the card you don't i mean you just you don't get 12 too many against this squad so we're putting that in there uh, let me go down in order real quick grayson allen threes i can't argue with that tim edward just based on the fact that this man has the what the best three-point percentage in the nba right now uh and he was balling uh, he needs those small lineups too that's that's a big part of it with grayson allen we're always going to talk about that is like is he gonna i mean he'll be in there but sometimes eric gordon's going to take his minutes at the end of games if they're in close games i don't know if they will be in this charlotte one but honestly if that spread is high enough i, I would take charlotte in that one before i took uh, the Phoenix Suns coming on the back-to-back. -back. They do, they are pretty good on the back-to-back -back in terms of playing defense. Um, let's look at Phoenix Suns real quick. Phoenix Suns on no rest. Starting with just the overall stuff here. 
I mean, they put up 114. I know that they're about 15 and 12 on no rest this season or so uh, or against. Oh, uh, no, that's coming out after a loss, rather. But let's look at their defensive rating real quick. Defensive rating on no rest this season. It's actually not bad. It's pretty good. Uh, they're, 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 they're fine. But either way, for Grayson Allen to be on the floor, you do want that those small lineups in there. I didn't look at that quite as much for Charlotte. But if you get good odds on that, let me know what, you, what you're finding for the, the, uh, the return on that, Tim. And we can talk about that. Um, for Jokic, you got a free squad for him. I need a banger to hit a two, man. I got you for you, and you need it to be Jokic. You're saying, let me know what you what you mean by that. Uh, Suggs over 11 points. That's what that's interesting to me. John Collins, we got to look at. Let me write these down real quick so we don't forget, because that's what I keep doing, and I don't want y'all to feel feel like I've forgotten. Uh, I am putting Jalen Duran on the card, though under 11 and a half rebounds. Like I said, who's coming with me? We'll find out. Uh, upcoming. Let's do that real quick. Let me do upcoming stuff so I don't forget these things. We'll do this in order. Let me go over back to what we got here. So we got Duran double. double. I mean, look, he can get 10 boards. He can get 11 boards, uh, Aiden Michelson, and you're still fine, right? What's good, Sauce? Um, yeah, so Sauce is asking about Emmanuel. Quickly under seven and a half assists. Yeah, I mean, I was looking at that too. That is a really good one. So let's put that in there so we make sure we look at that real quick. We're going to look at Emmanuel quickly under 7.5 assist. Put that up. What's the other one we're talking about real quick? We got um, Pistons over under. Honestly, I, I think I lean under in that one. I know Cade is now actually ruled in, uh, but there was a couple of things I was looking at for that that kind of made me go under in the um, in the Detroit game. I, I'm not looking at nearly as many points. I mean, I, you can look at that however you want as it pertains to Jalen Duran rebounds, right? Because if, if you think there's going to be more missed shots, more rebounds are available, but that pace is probably just going to maintain its slowness. Uh, if, if one more thing we can look at here for Detroit, let's look at uh, Pistons pace game log last 10 games. You know what I'm Pistons game log pace. It's just crazy how it's just about which, which how you which order you put it in against Toronto. You're always going to play fast. That's why I do lean uh, at least to like Orlando getting points tonight uh, against Toronto. And this 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 total got pretty low. Charlotte has actually been playing a bit slower. Dallas plays super fast. Brooklyn. This sounds about right for Brooklyn to play at, at about a 99 pace, no matter what. They they really don't change how they play in this Detroit one. They did go slightly over last game, uh, and that pace was at 94.8. So if that's the case, there were a good amount of made shots, obviously, in that game. That's a big part of it. I mean, Detroit shot, well, they shot 44% from the field. They they were doo-doo, obviously, in that one. So uh, I expect that from their offense. That's why I would lean under, honestly, with Miami at home, too, the way they play D. They play a little faster at home. They, they score a few more points, but they also play much better D. So I'm not really sure about that. What's up, good NPR here? I'll see you there. Miami can win by five, and what's good? Yeah, Miami can win by five. Absolutely. What's that? What's that? Uh, that line? It's not at five, is it? No. Yeah, it's at seven and a half. So people raise that up a bit. Uh, I guess they opened at some point as dogs. That doesn't make any sense. That's that's for sure incorrect. Uh, maybe when it opened up for Action Network to put it on their site. But yeah, you already got them at eight and a half on the road. Oh my bad, they're on the road, bro. I'm I'm tripping over here. They're, the Heat on the road actually score even fewer points per game. Those come out to about. Uh, 216 so it's right at that number I, I didn't play a total with this with this that one because i wasn't too sure but i know we got a manual quickly up is there one more that i've that uh and if you want to know about joker let me know what you're talking about no just any other oh you already got joker in it i got you okay well yeah let's find it let's find it together sanchi landscape design i might hit you up if we need something there uh and then jay suggs yeah i want to talk about jay suggs from bostonator bill as well so i don't want to forget that one let me put that up on the screen uh jalen suggs uh, we said 11. I'm assuming you meant 11 and a half points over. Let me know what you mean by that, boss man. And we'll get into that one. Um, what's up, Nigel? Paolo points and assists, 27 and a half. I think that's kind of high, but he has been diming. That's a good point. Uh, made by our guy Waffles, <laughs> my fellow non-Belgian, but either way, Waffles are fire. We know that. Uh, and we're talking about Paolo uh, assists and 27.5. It is high. 27.5 PA. The thing, the reason I didn't put a bet in on, on like Paolo or anything like that so far, because I was looking at him too, was uh, the fact that I do think this game's going under, or at least it's more likely to go under. Honestly, I, I don't see a ton of points coming. Do we have that? So uh, it's at 219 and a half. Oh no, that's the other game. My bad. Yeah. 217 and a half. So it actually, you can still get a 215 if you did want it over, 
215 is is definitely right where I draw the line. Like I think that's about 215 and a half is probably a fair line. That's why I do lean under for 217 and a half. Even if you get 218 on FanDuel right now, that's a good bet to go under for me. But man, if, if you get a middle play like 218 right here, this is what we call perfect arbitrage, right? Like 218, you take the under on that, you take the over on 215, and it's not a complete arbitrage, but it's not a nice middle, right? You get a really good chance, and it's really likely that at least one of those two things happens, and then you got the chance that both of them happen. So if you take under 218 on FanDuel right now, and you took over 215 on Caesars right now, if you have both those books, that is a beautiful middle right there. And now you, you're looking at a way uh, to, to really almost guarantee yourself money and, and have the opportunity to win a lot of money. So I like that. Um, but let me not get too far away. Let's start with quickly before I get too far away and make sure I don't have any others in the chat. This is where we need a producer. You know what I mean? How sick would that be? We'll get there. Uh, we got quickly in there. All right. So let me start with quickly, right? Uh, and the stuff I was looking at with quickly was I do want to take him because he it, it, the thing with quickly for his assist is that he's playing Orlando. We know that this is a better uh, under against Orlando than it is over. Right. That makes total sense. We've done this before where I've like had Steph Curry over points and Steph Curry under assists in games where we know that this magic team is going to play that press D if you get by them then you're going to be in good position to score because they're going to bring everybody up to you if you're Steph Curry. And if you if you don't get by them, but you shoot from above the break, you're also in a good spot, right? So, And we know IQ is shooting from above the break. And we know that he's also the main ball handler in all the pick and roll. He's everything to this team at this point, especially if Gary Trent does not play. If somebody could hit me with the uh, the injury report and let me know if they if they see anything for um, – for Mr. Um, Gary Trent Jr. on the, the Raptors, that'd be really helpful because I want to know what's up with him. When you look at his scoring, look, look where he's shooting from. Damn, Orlando's just been balling <laughs> on defense. We know that. Uh, for Orlando, they're going to give up the seventh fewest points to his shot type than where he scores from. They're given, still giving up. You know, They're a little bit better than middle of the pack in terms of giving that up. If you look at his playmaking stuff with how many assists he might could get, that's going to be pretty low too, right? Yeah, 24th. I thought he'd be scoring a bunch more. The only thing you, uh, that I like to look at here is where he's shooting from. And if you look at team stats and you go to the opponent shooting for this uh, Orlando team to see where they're shooting from, you're definitely going to see go by zone, by the way. And if you have any questions about the tools I'm using, they're in the description of the videos. You know what? I'm realizing now I keep telling you that, but they're in the description of the videos that I put up on demand, not the ones that are in the live stream. So I got to get the live stream ones out there to you too. So before you leave, you know what's up. On the season, in terms of uh, field goal attempts against them above the break three, they've been actually doing a lot better. That's probably why they're so much better limiting point guards than they were. It's the percentage that I think is kind of high, but nah, they've been just really good, honestly, in terms of opponents shooting above the break threes, limiting them in their percentage, limiting them in, uh, their, yeah, it's still limiting them in percentage, 35% from above the break threes. Uh, and then if you go into the restricted area, against them i mean they're not giving up a ton of shots anyway because they don't play a lot of possessions right so you see these slower teams at times with fewer shots against them um but iq if you want to know where he's shooting from it's pretty obvious right like he's always going to be shooting from uh, mostly from the top of the key or getting into the lane so let's look at players real quick for him and look at where he's shooting from specifically i also want to look at uh play type real quick with you uh and look at i think it's probably a lot of pick and roll ball handler if i had to guess uh, and let's make this the team we filter it out here to Toronto, so we can only we only have to look at his stuff real quick. If you look at points for him off of the pick and roll ball handler, he's obviously doing it the most, even more than when Schroeder was there, even more than when uh, Scotty was actually playing. So yeah, he's the dude that they want to have uh, starting the action and getting it going. He's not shooting that that great off of it. I mean, that's a pretty bad percentage for somebody coming off of a screen for sure. So I mean, there's nobody else on the team really to pass to, um, which is why you like it. Look at, I mean, these assists are pretty high, but I, if we look at who, I mean, Phoenix is someone that gives up assists. I do have a, a bet for a, a opposing part point guard to get some stats against Phoenix today. Uh, and, and if you, oh, that's bro, I'm looking at rebounds, but still, these assists are high, right? Uh, Portland's pretty good. I mean, he's been diming up. If I, I'm assuming that he's got a ton of potential assists, that's the only thing that would scare you as well. That was something that helped me stay away from it, I'm pretty sure. If we look at players, tracking, passing. Questions about what I'm doing here, let me know. But Clippers, their Clippers are plus six and a half now. That's an interesting question. Caesars 217, that thing is bugged. I appreciate it, Jonas. Yeah, sometimes these things don't pull through the exact stats. So if I'm looking at like NBA odds on a different site, yeah, no matter what, before I put, obviously if I put a bet down, I'm going to go put it down on the book, uh, in which case I'll have the exact line in front of me. But yeah, that's for sure going to be wrong sometimes as well. 217 on Caesars. Yeah, so there's no middle opportunity there. But it was a good chance to just show you what a middle opportunity looks like in case you didn't have one. Um, looking at IQ's player tracking real quick and his passing. 
And let's look at, I mean, honestly, without uh, I without a hurdle in there, without anybody to pass to, it's just so tough. But he has been going over. Look at his passing. Let's look at it in the last 10 right quick and see what that does for us. For IQ, potential assists. I mean, he's up at 15 and a half in his last eight. Let's look at what he does with and without Scotty Barnes. Uh, Emmanuel, I should just be doing quickly. Quickly uh, with and without scotty barnes on raptors because obviously if it, if i just do that without saying on raptors then it's just going to give me uh the stats with the knicks as well but in the games without him sheesh 10.2 let's look at a video quickly without uh scotty barnes let's look at that game log real quick that's 10.2 assists and he's at what are we seven and a half that's a tough under man even though i hella lean under when you play the magic i totally get that we got to look at how they limit assists in general but yeah, I mean, he's gone over – well, he it's seven's high, right? It, there's a reason that it's high. Seven is the number he did not get, but if it was six and a half. Maybe I feel – oh, wait, bro, you, can you still get a six and a half? This thing bugs sometimes too. It says FanDuel six and a half, but I'm not positive that that's going to be the case, right? Let's look at what it actually is on FanDuel so we know for sure. Keontae George, Larry Stone Cold, yes, he is on my list. Let me make sure I put him on there because that's a really good point. Uh, I did want to look at him with y'all. I, I did not end up, uh, I took him uh, on the lines.com. So I didn't give that bet out here on my channel. Uh, but if we look at uh, Keontae, like one of Keontae George or Colin Sexton, George Sexton, if you want to call him that, they're getting, they're getting 30 points tonight. Like somebody's getting 25 to 30 uh, between those two. Why not both? I, I mean, they're going to take all the shots. Um, let's look, I, I think it's at 25 and a half PA. So let me just look at that in a minute for, for uh, Keontae who is one of my favorite players, but I saw him at, at Summer League in Vegas. He's so nice with it. Um, let's see. We got, oh, what's up, Adriano Abdul? Appreciate you, man. Um, yeah, so the stuff with Quickly, he's right on there. Like, if he's going to be at 15 and a half, let's look at the last four games where he's played without uh, Scotty Barnes. I still haven't made a decision about that one. I'm still waffling on it, aren't I? 20 of them. in the. He's played two in the in the team's last four games. And in those two, he's got 20 potential assists with 13 assists. Who was he playing in his last two? Detroit and Portland? No, that's not right. What did I do here that's wrong then? I filtered something incorrectly. Toronto Raptors, last four games. Bro. Oh, because we don't always get tracking data. So I don't know exactly which ones these are. That's the problem, right? I, I You don't get tracking data for every single game. So when I say last four for Toronto in this tracking data for uh, the players on Toronto... I'm only going to get it for the games that they actually had that data available. But you can see that in both these games. How hallelujah. Bro. Actually, that's really helpful because you can see Scotty Barnes is not playing in any of these games. And that's really what I want to talk about. But I do want to know which teams he got those potential assists against. If he's at 20, I got to believe one of them was this Phoenix game. Which is also why you might like meet uh, Michich to get his in that other one. But you got to get seven and a half. And that's right. That's that's where you, I'm probably out. Right. And so I was finishing up looking at FanDuel to see if he had that number set six and a half on FanDuel. I do think it's close to worth it on FanDuel if the juice isn't terrible, which it might very well could be. And now we don't even have player assists for any Raptors players because we're probably about to find out what Gary Trent's not playing. Is that what we're about to find out? Everything's gone for this team. So that means there's some stuff going on with the injury report, right? Uh, let's see if it's up on DraftKings right now, just as the other like main book for for quickly assists. Because I would love to be able to target it as an under on seven and a half. Uh, I'm, my bad. I'm potentially an over on six and a half. That's how close it is. But because of the fact that I'm so close on both of them, it's like I need. I, I often talk about it. I need these props to be, to be at like a, a, a gap of about two from what my projections are. I think seven it, as a as a good number for him to to hit in this game so i it's not really giving me much either way we still have him at seven and a half here under is only minus 125 though that's where i would lean so if you are going to take that uh that quickly one i understand it but uh i'm i'm off it so that's just the the, the honest truth with you but you you see you see what it is so like whatever you want to do with that um emmanuel quickly assists we're going to be off that that's not going to be a play for us let me see if i can do this real quick yeah I'm going to put an X next to that just so you know where I'm at with it. Jalen Suggs and Keontae George. Let me look at let me look at Jay Suggs real quick. Um, and yeah, Free Sauce trying to find a way to fade the Suns. I feel you. Uh, Free Sauce, we, uh, if you if you look at the other video I have up on YouTube, I talk about uh, 
I'm going to say it wrong, but I think it's Vasilye Micic. I know how to say Micic. That's hella fun. Uh, but if you say, if you look at Micic, he's at six and a half assists. He's only at 11 and a half points. Um, I think both of those are good pick and roll ball handlers versus the Suns. That's where they struggle the most. We talked about that last game. I know I'm interrupting myself, but I will just show you what I mean. If you look at play type, um, against and plus sauce my guy i gotta get sauce his answer real quick if you look at uh the the pick and roll ball handler stuff you know that's what michich is doing if you look at defensively for this sun's team this is one of the only areas that they're not going to be a top team right um they do give up the one two three four five six seven eighth most points per possession to the pick and roll ball handler uh overall that turns into 17 still like bottom 10 in terms of the amount of points that they're giving up to that position uh so i'm not really with that as far as michich threes the problem is is that trey man is in and trey man is somebody uh that will take away shots even though he's gonna be the, he's gonna be the shooting guard for this team right trent jr available thank you jonas this is very helpful because that does mean uh that we're, what we're talking about here is like with emmanuel quickly more likely to get assists. And I think that's why it's going to sit at seven and a half now. And that when you see this come back up for, um, for this site right here for FanDuel, you're going to see that that number is probably at seven and a half. They're not going to give you that six and a half anymore. They just see the rest of the market at seven and a half. They see Gary Trent in, which is a much better shooter than anybody else on this squad. Uh, and that's what it's going to be. So um, I did take Wendell Carter Jr. rebounds in this one. And I, the other one I wanted to look at while I'm just on this game real quick and I'll get off it. Oh, Jalen Suggs, I got you, uh, is also Kelly Olynyk under rebounds. Um, and you get good juice on that for Kelly O to go under. It's not just all this red that we see here. It's like, yo, who <laughs> Kelly Olynyk's not getting boards versus teams that are not as good, like four rebounds against Charlotte, right? That's the first thing. He and Wendell Carter Jr., probably going to be guarding each other a bit more around the, the perimeter. But I still think Wendell Carter Jr. is a much better bet for the over because we get the 105 juice for his over. We get the 105 juice for Kelly Olynyk under. It's hella correlated, right? Uh, I mean, th th this is something for, for Kelly O. Let me show you what I mean real quick for Kelly Olynyk and his under. His rebound chances in his last three games, and that's I want to look at that in part because of the fact that uh, Chris Boucher is not playing. He has played in a few of these games. Well, let me stop tripping. Just go to team over here. I'm going to go to players and find Kelly Olenek stuff real quick on his tracking rebound data. All right. So if we look at uh, just the, the Toronto Raptors right quick uh, in the six, and now we're looking at the last, um, well, let's see, look at last four real quick for Toronto. See what we get there. Y'all ever notice how everybody from Toronto says Toronto? That's how they, that's a, I don't know why. But if you have a friend from Toronto, you know he talks like that. Uh, so, like in the last four games, uh, Chris Boucher took 17 rebound chances uh, at that point. And so we got three from Kelly. Let's go last three games. I believe he played two games in, in the, of the Raptors last three, or we just don't have tracking data. It's one of the two, but even in the last two games that he's played for this squad, nine potential rebounds a game. And you're telling me he needs to get seven of them. I get that he's done that, but he's going up uh, of a contested rebound chance percentage of 21.4%, right? And I'm sorry. That's, I was even my bad. I was even messing up. He only got six in his, uh, he's averaging six in this time frame right here. Let's just look at uh, his stuff real quick. Kelly. Olenek, uh last let's do last 10 games but actually I don't want to do that because I want to do it without Jakob Pertl last five games right still hasn't hit that number definitely played some decent rebounding teams but not any of the best ones uh and what we can assume here when we look at his uh his tracking data for his rebounds I mean six rebounds that he's averaging uh he's at 5.6 over his last five in general uh chris boucher was in for one of those taking some of those rebounds away but his rebound chances aren't there so you're talking about kelly olenic going up against the uh the orlando magic there's no way that they give up a lot of come on man. there's no way that they give up a ton of uh of rebounds to, to pretty much any center but definitely not somebody of his ilk if you will uh rebounds don't make me look stupid miami all right, I mean, 22nd, still obviously limiting them to the ninth fewest. So I still think that's a good play right there. Um, Jonte Porter PRA, yeah, exactly. Waffles plays. That's a, that's the other dude who does take stuff from them. If you look at the rebound chances here, when uh, Jonte Porter's actually been in, he's leading that the team in that, right? Even in his 21 uh, minutes, he's still got more rebound chances than Kelly Olynyk, who we just, we like to fade. So I am going to add Kelly to the card real quick because I do have a bet on Wendell Carter Jr. If you were watching the, um, if you were watching the other video, so the updated card is going to look like this. I got Jalen Duran. I got uh, Kelly Olenek as well. And so if you are playing stuff like underdog, people were asking about underdog earlier. Um, if you are looking at those places and you and you see like seven, that's great. But if you start to see like six and it's like you could get that, that um, 
you know, that, that push on that, that's when I start to like it a bit less for sure. I like to get the, make sure I get that half in there and then get the good juice. But, uh, for, for, this is the updated card for two things that I've added now. And then we were going to be looking, this is why we still have this Jalen Suggs is who we're looking at while we're in that game with the magic. Let's look at, uh, Jalen Suggs. You know, that everything that this, uh, this Raptors team is going to do as of late, especially is going to be giving up points to pretty much everybody, bro. They're like the worst team in the, uh, well, yeah, they are pretty much the worst team in the league right now. Uh, they're definitely a team tanking the best. They are pretty good against shooting guards. Um, and that's been on the season. Let me look at uh, my fantasy pro site here. Going to have this in the description of the video. You have my word. I also want to remind you, jump in the comments. Let me know what you guys want to hear. We still build that list of the, the next games that we have upcoming. All right. But we're looking at shooting guards in the last. Let's look at the last seven for this squad. Mm. Even, even as they've been sucking, they've been good at limiting uh guards and their points so who was asking me about Jalen Suggs real quick because uh Toronto there are no they're, they're coming back up Jaynette because uh what happened was is it looks like Trent Jr. was probably recently just uh made in yo happy uh happy Friday Marcus Sugarman appreciate the love out there and we got uh, I gotta add John Collins for my guy Diego Pena let me just add that before I forget this is things we're looking at um John Collins going to add him real quick. Um, but Jalen Suggs not looking great, right? Like this is something actually Toronto has done pretty well. Let me see if I can get some matchups up for him. So he's it, last time he played against this squad. Let's see who was guarding him. If we can in a minute, Jalen Suggs, we know he's out there for defense, right? He's not exactly going to be the dude scoring. He does have some nice point totals in his last couple. But if we look at the minutes, yeah, I mean, he's playing a decent amount of minutes here, even with everybody back. I, I, uh, what's his name? Markel Fultz has been playing. Gary Harris has been in there, too, kind of taking away some of his stuff with Gary Harris. Yeah, so those last two games where he scored a lot, Gary wasn't in there to take some of his minutes because he's his backup shooting guard defender. Same same type of player. Um, not the, the type of dude that you want to have to take, apparently, against this Toronto team, bro. That's crazy uh, that they've actually been that good against opposing shooting guards. Let's look at points for opposing shooting guards right quick. Uh, for against Toronto. So we're looking at, I mean, Jay and Ivy didn't have a good game. KCP is not the focal point of the offense. Anthony Simons, I guess he's a shooting guard when Scoot's in. I mean, he's just the main ball handler, honestly, and playmaker. 23 in that one. That's He's not the same player as Jalen Suggs. Neither is Bradley Beal. Matisse Thibel is a, a player actually pretty comparable to Jalen Suggs. I would bet that's somebody that they talk about in uh, courtside pal as somebody that's comparable to him as like a scorer and shooter. I'm not sure if they'll actually use Matisse, uh, but that is someone that like would fall under this one. Let me see if that is the case. No, I guess Matisse is not the exact same type of shooter or player as <laughs> as uh, Jay Suggs, but he, they do the same thing. They're out there for defense, right? So yeah, I mean, it's gonna. What, is it about the threes for him too? Does he need to hit a lot of threes? Yeah, I mean, he had four threes this last one. Two and a half is a pretty high three prop. That would be somewhere I would lean under way, way before I went over in that one too. So um, if you want to see where uh, or the um, let's look real quick. Last thing for Jay Suggs, I promise. Uh, looking at his shooting real quick. Shout out to all my uh, Gonzaga fans out there. Came for y'all to lose in the tournament again. <laughs> uh, players shooting. Let's look at by zone and let's look at this um, Orlando Magic team real quick. What we get for Mr. Suggs, definitely not getting all the way to the lane. Only three shots down low. Is he shooting above the break threes? Yeah, he's shooting the most above the break threes for them on the season. Ha, damn. All right, that's a good look real quick because now we can actually look at – If I'm going to assume that if if um, if the uh, if Toronto is mad good at stopping shooting guards, I'm going to assume that they're also good at limiting players who shoot above the break a lot, right? Um, if you look at above the break – amount so toronto here that's a probably gonna be a pretty good number for them oh, okay i mean they're still giving up like a decent amount from up, up top it's gonna be about the threes for him right that's what it's gonna come down to i don't always want to take a player prop when it's all about threes if you wanted to get frisky and be like yo my man's gonna hit three threes for plus 150 that's basically like a ladder play to me um because if you can get one and a half which you can for for terrible juice right then you take it and then and then if you want you ladder it up with the other one so if you think he's gonna get two threes he's been shooting it's it's all about the attempts as well He's been shooting, I mean, 7, 8, 12, but it's very sporadic, man. And like we said here, the other the recent games, this is with this is with Gary Harris, by the way. I've got Gary Harris in here, so it's sporadic with Gary Harris. But without Gary Harris, I bet this number is a little bit better because he might even get a few more minutes. So, yeah, there's going to be a bit more green here when it comes to his threes without Gary Harris. In those cases, uh, he is taking still about five threes on average but like yeah they stay about four or more so that's risky I, I think the under two and a half is is actually a better play even at minus 91 194 so i'm off jalen suggs 
uh, just for the record there. Let me get make that clear. I would lean under before I ever went over. And the same for his – it's threes because he's not really taking many shots that aren't three-pointers, right? If he's got five threes uh, a game that he's shooting, and this is only in 26 minutes over his last 10. Mm, came back from a little injury, I know that. But uh, field goal attempts, eight and a half, and the threes are five, right? So that's why it's really just about is he making threes and does this team give up threes? Uh, and overall, as far as threes go, let's look at uh, that last thing here. Opponent three-pointers made. Let's do – I mean, this is a completely different team than they were at the beginning of the season, right? So, for Toronto, we got to do last 10 games, opponent threes. I mean, yeah, they're going up the third most, bro. Oh, no, that's assists. Come on. Figure it out, bro. Figure it out. All right. A three-point attempts against in their last 10. Probably still pretty good. Oh, wait. This is – yeah, my bad. Those teams are doing well. They are doing poorly. So, they're still giving up the seventh most threes attempted. And that means they're giving up the seventh most made as well. So that might be a, a bet you want to take it is threes for him, but I don't want to have to bank on him to score other ways, even though you can get all the way to the rim if you want against this team. In fact, let me just update that to make it clear. Like what I would do with Jalen Suggs is 11 and a half points. No, uh, over 2.53 PM. It's just about the attempts. And that's a definite maybe. I'll just write better because it's not good. It's just better than the uh, the inverse here where you just take the points for him. So uh, let me make sure I didn't miss anybody. We got uh, next up on the on the list here. We do have uh, we're looking at Paolo points and assists. And I want to put a few more on the dock in case we got that. Jonathan Isaac blocks. That's an interesting one. Tell me about that for a minute. Uh, Waffles plays games. If you have something for that. Nigel wants to know about uh, Zubash. We can look at that because we haven't talked about them yet. And I do want to talk about Mitrich. We should look at that um, that other game here for the Suns and the Charlotte Hornets. Uh, and we got John Collins points on here. John Collins might be a good play because there's nobody playing for Utah at this point. But I think Keontae and, and Collins Sexton are the much better plays in that one. With Clint Capella, at least, like a, at least there, right, uh, and capable. Uh, the other one was Mitrich. Uh, threes, maybe assists. For him, I took points already for Micic. I'll show you why in a sec. Um, and then was I missing any others? And we'll talk about Zoo in a sec. We'll talk about Zubat because we want to get into that Lakers game. Uh, you said under 8.5 rebounds for him. So let me take a look at that in a sec. All right, let's look at um, Paolo real quick. Paolo, we, keep, we cannot get away from this game, can we? Uh, <laughs> looking at Paolo. Assist for Paolo. If we look at the PA, 20, is it still 27 and a half for our guy? I think it's 28 and a half now on a lot of books. Are you going to click on Paolo? For, I was probably already on it and I'm just high. All right. 28 and a half at minus 113. We lost a lot of steam there. You still get 27 and a half for minus 125 if you want it. Looking at this game against the um, the Pistons. I mean, if you look at the way the Pistons have played D, it's tough because of, of who they played against. Uh, Pistons last five games um right we're looking at i mean not bad d right playing awful 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 teams it got smacked by the, the mavs who were like in the middle of a losing streak and couldn't let that keep going brooklyn they scored a buck 18 yeah i mean it's the defense right pistons because honestly like this this uh the problem with this magic team is um, they just haven't been playing offense at all, bro. If you look at them over the course of their last, uh, let's just say like 10 games. Yeah. I, I, that defensive, uh, offensive rating for them is abysmal at this point. Uh, it's it all the way down to one ten and a half, and they have not been playing good comp. That's the really scary thing about it is like, why aren't you scoring against bad teams? Which sometimes makes you nervous. Um, Orlando magic last 10 games. Why is your offense so duty? I mean, these are bad, bad, bad defensive teams. All, all of these five right here are horrible. Uh, and then, you, I mean, they couldn't score against Indy, who has been slowing things down a little bit. They got, they did beat Brooklyn. That was a fine one. The Knicks is tough. They did score bug 19 against this squad, against Washington. So, I mean, yeah, the 113, they're at 113 and a half for their team total tonight. The thing that I was looking at too real quick for Paolo, it's like I don't have a really strong feel, and I haven't had one for the difference between he and uh, Franz right now. If we're talking about the points for Paolo, like if we look at the shots, he is taking a few more shots than Franz in the last 10. He's at 16.8 shots per game, and he needs to get 23 and a half points and what I am predicting to be a bit lower scoring. Right, like everywhere he shoots from is where Detroit's going to be terrible. I, I, I get that. Uh, that's going to be a big part of it. Well, let's, let's put Paolo in here for um, in, into the the course side Paolo tool real quick, and look at what we got here for Paolo. Points against this squad. 
because see, Detroit's not really going to be too bad. Did I pass them already? Sometimes I do that. Where are you at, Detroit? Did I pass them? Because I, I, oh yeah, I was looking for the, see, I'm looking for red and they're going to be blue. And so they are very bad against him uh, in terms of his shot profile and his scoring profile. That does, but the thing is, is like, I bet you Franz is going to be the same, right? So let's at least see what that's like. Because the thing is, they do the same shit, man. Honestly, they do the same stuff. And and I would say Franz is a little bit better of a shooter, and and Powell is a little bit better of a passer. Um, but if we look at points shooting, um, oh no, you know what? Yeah, it is it is a Paolo game a bit more. Like they're still bad against. Uh, you can see down here is where Detroit's at. They're still giving up stuff to Franz, but Franz has been on like not on one what's the opposite of on one off one like franz has been off one basically has not gotten his points prop this remains really high for him uh the thing that you look at real quick right for for these two guys if you look at players and you look at the way that the these two dudes score let's look at drives real quick and that would actually be tracking if you look at drives last 10 let's say for uh the magic so we can see the way that these dudes are both going to be driving a ton right um if we look at well let's just look at this real quick in in, in general who's got the most drives per game they're going to be up there we gotta go down a little bit i guess make me look bad bro uh, all the way down here but that's still gonna be in the top like 85th percentile so let's just filter out so it's just the orlando magic right quick orlando you can see they're both going to be driving the most on the team, which is important because it's when they get to the rim uh, that you're going to see um, this squad, this uh, Detroit squad struggling a ton as well. If you look at uh, opponent sh shooting for this team, it's going to be where they're really vulnerable consistently. If you look at the zone uh, and we look at restricted area, let's, I mean, honestly, we could do the whole season for, for Detroit. They've been pretty much the same squad. Field goals against, let's look at field goals made down there. Yeah, it's still going to be bad for them. If you look at the the restricted area or if you just want the paint rest, non-restricted area as well, that's where they're going to give up a ton of shots. That's where these dudes are going to be shooting from, both these guys, right? They're going to be shooting from there. But looks like Paolo's been taking more shots. Looks like he's been getting more. So I, I would lean to his props more, but that's high, bro. That's very, very high for me for, for uh, Paolo. Once you get to 23 and a half for Paolo, now I'm like, I got to think about it, even against this team. That's why the under is juiced uh, uh, down here because they, you know, they're giving you a little bit more incentive to take the over for Paolo. So I'm not not as keen, honestly, on the Paolo stuff. I was looking at him a little bit. He is going to keep shooting from where this team is most vulnerable. Uh, if we, we we will look real quick at the the, sh the shooting dashboard for uh, for both these dudes. If we look at by zone and we go to this Orlando squad, we got Orlando players that we're looking at here. If we look at restricted area, I mean, it's both of them. Obviously, Franz a little bit more all the way to the rim. And then Paolo a little bit more pull up and a little bit more mid range. And that is where uh, th this squad is very vulnerable. If you look at mid range for Detroit, um, I thought they were giving up a bunch more from the mid range. I mean, they, they're giving up made field goals for sure. They're giving up the fifth most made field goals. Uh, and that is the highest percentage. So like if Paolo, if Paolo gets the, the foul line game going, then that is something you look at. Let's at least look at for uh, free throw attempts for Paolo as well, because that's where he gets a lot of points, as we know. Uh, six free throw attempts per game over his last 10. And I mean, that's basically been a little bit higher. It's basically been seven for the last like eight games, right? For him getting about four and a half points off of that. Can you bank on that? Are there teams that are getting, are they fouling a lot? We just want to see real quick. Let's go to team general. Uh, four factors is going to be like the rate of free throw attempts. Effect, these are just like what they consider really, really important uh, random four factors, rebounding, turnovers, and free throws. Uh, the, free, the defensive free throw attempt rate for Detroit is that high? Oh, yeah, it's the highest in the league. They foul the most. Paolo would be the dude. It would be Paolo over Franz. I would lean Franz under if you're taking it. For the assist, that's the last thing I'll look at for Paolo. If you look at that, five and a half. Um, I do believe he's a pretty solid assister again, uh, in terms of his profile against Detroit. Just looking at his assist because we were asked about points and assists, playmaker stuff versus Detroit. Looking for that blue again. Yeah, 16th. You know what I mean? It's like, eh, it's right in there. Uh, let's. What was his um, potential assist against them last? Let's look at potential assist real quick. And we'll move on from Paolo. Tracking, passing. Uh, let's do last 10. Uh, and let's do Orlando Magic. Put that together for Paolo. Potential assist. I mean, he's leading the team. He needs to get five or he needs to get six of them mm. on 10 potential assists. I don't love it. I'm off Paolo. If anything, I'm on uh, the points before the assist for Paolo, and I'm on the uh, under for, for Franz more than anything. So not going to go over that for Paolo, though. I'm going to just put oh, not over because I, I haven't put a bet. I'm not putting anything on him for him on the card right now. 
All right. Uh, I am going to look at Keontae George right now. Let me check the comments, though. Make sure we're not missing anything. Save that. You see what's up. Jump in the comments and let me know what you want to talk about. We got Brandon Ingram threes. Bruce Brucey Brown under. Still wanted to talk about that Toronto game. That's cool. We can talk about Brucey Brown in a minute. Let's let's finish up a couple of these real quick. Uh, and I'll try to take a little bit less time. Keontae George. It's just about who do you think is going to score. I mean, when you when you look at these two, uh, look at Utah and Atlanta. That is an interesting game to me. I think Keontae George is a, a good play for the points and assists. If you wanted to talk about him, or were you asking? Yeah, I'm looking at the PA. So let me know what you think about that. But for um, where we got here. For Keontae, the five and a half assists. The thing is, is like there's no Jordan Clarkson. Uh, there's no Lowry Markinen. And so these shots are going to come from Keontae George and they're going to come from uh, Colin Sexton. And so it, it's, a, it's tough to say with this Atlanta team, like if we want to look at where they're the most uh, vulnerable, first of all, let's just look at who's doing what for them between those two, between Sexton and George real quick. If we look at, um, I mean, Atlanta's bad everywhere, bro. Uh, if we look at pick and roll ball handler, that's one place we like to start offensively. If we look at uh, who's on here for Utah possessions. Yeah. I mean, Keontae's a point guard, right? We know that. So he's going to be doing that a bit more. I would be willing to bet he dimes up out of that pretty well. If we look at the the play type against this, um, this Atlanta squad, how do they defend that, that pick and roll ball handler possessions against them? Mm, not that many. Yeah, they're bottom of the pack there in terms of how often teams are running the pick and roll against them, even though they have a lot of um, – I might make me sure I'm on defense. Yeah, I'm on defensive. Points per possession, they're not bad at defending that, right? Uh, points in general off of that. Yeah, they're going to be in the top 10, basically top 12, in terms of limiting points from the pick and roll ball handler. So what is uh, – let's look at what um, – Sexton is doing a bit more. I mean, I'm sure he's driving, right? Like uh, that, that's kind of what he does. He just gets to the bucket uh, and takes a ton of shots from down low. So let's actually just start with that. The, the, where he's shooting from real quick. We'll go player shooting. If we could click on the right thing, we would go player shooting and we look at by zone and would do that for, um, for this uh, Utah team real quick. It's going to be a restricted area, right? Like that's where Colin Sexton's shooting from. Our, our man's not really even taking too many shots from outside there's 3.6 yeah it's like in the paint even if it's not all the way to the bucket and you look at the dude who's giving up uh who, who would be taking those shot attempts from him jordan clarkson not playing in this one like we talked about how many threes is sexton taking from up here 3.7 from the top of the key basically and from from above the wing not really mid-range game that's Keontae. um but if you look at the where the the um Let's look at where the Jazz have been the most vulnerable from. And let's look at it recently. Walker Kessler has not been getting minutes. That's a big part of this. I mean, he, he looks a lot worse in general this year. I won't lie. But he also is just not uh, getting minutes. He's gotten like 20. Uh, he's played twice in the last bunch of games. Only gotten like 20 minutes in those games. So if you look at defensively where their you know, teams are scoring on Utah over their last 10. Did I hit last 10? I didn't. Yeah, let me filter it. Last 10 where they've just been like, yo, we don't care anymore. We give up. Uh, I believe Markins played twice in that time frame. Did not mean to hit Utah Jazz. Uh, field goals against down low. Are they giving up shots? Not even. Are they? They're probably a pretty good percentage for the other team. Not bad. I mean, they're bottom ten in terms of their opponent field goal percentage down low. If you look at the in the paint non RA, um, that's where they're giving up a bunch more shots, and that is where Con Sexton is scoring from. And they're giving up a bunch more makes. They're giving up a really high percentage from there. They're bottom 10, right? Bottom eight or so in terms of the paint non are a non-restricted area, right? And we'll just make clear what that means. Non-restricted area is that little circle under the basket uh, that is about five feet out from the basket and in. So everything within about five feet is going to be there. And if you look at non, yeah, I mean, Con Sexton is going to keep taking those floaters. He's going to love that little uh, baby jumper from that area because that's really the only type of shot that he makes. I, I mean, I like Con Sexton's game a lot, but that's just what it is. He's not a good shooter from outside. So, the assists are a better play to me than than the points for Keontae. I, I would, I like I said, I hit the the points and assists, and he's been going over that number pretty comfortably against uh, much better defenses. Um, and so if you just want to see what this kid's made of, the way that I think Utah does, right? Seventeen field goal attempts in the last two games, and that was against much better teams as well. So that that might stick around as far as Sexton in the last couple games as well. I just want to see what he's been at, and his points prop is going to be higher. We know that, um, and the assists for him are also probably pretty high. Come on now, 29 and a half, right? That's about five, four more, five more that he needs than, uh, than Keontae. The 22 and a half points is intriguing. He has the shots over the, yeah, I mean, he's taking as many shots as Keontae, but Keontae's taking those 17. He's got a much lower prop. So I think he's a better play. I am going to just check him because I hit him at 24 and a half PA. 
but I still, if anybody's watching and wants to talk about uh, Colin Se- or Keontae George, I do think he's a, a pretty good play here for uh, for the points and assists combined. And, and the points are feeling pretty good as well with the amount of shots that he has been putting up. Uh, somebody want to know about John Collins while we're on this game. He has blown that. Pe- that uh, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, you're saying blown past it full court. I, I agree with that. Um, nice. Crack Sparrow, like good, like-minded folks here t- talking about Kelly Olenek. Uh, going under for Ke- Kelly O. No offense, Kelly O. Keep shooting those threes, bro. Um, all right, cool. Looking at the uh, other games we have here, John Collins. I looked at him for a minute and I was just quickly off it. I don't. I mean, I, it's it's helpful that like Walker Kessler doesn't get very many minutes, obviously. But I don't know about that with with John Collins. Even uh, against maybe he wants to bring it. You know, maybe there's something there for him wanting to bring it against. Um, Capella, his old teammate, minus 120 on FanDuel. If that's still right, is is a much better number than the other ones and a good place to take it if you want it. But let me just tell you, I don't love having to take John Collins props. He's done me wrong in the past, and it might be just personal at this point and not something that is actually you can rely on numbers wise. Um, but I have not hit correctly on a John Collins bet in a minute. Actually, I, I hit his rebounds for a bit, right? But this uh and, and this uh, Hawks team is not great at rebounding. They give up a ton of them, but he's at nine and a half at this point. That's 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 too high for me, right? For for the rebounds for for JC, that I, I cannot. I don't think I could own that. I mean, if I briefly look at his um, uh, tracking stuff for his rebounding stuff, I, I don't. I don't think I can condone that, y'all. I, I can't. <laughs> Not in good conscience. Rebound chances over his last ten. We have tracking data for this Utah Jazz team. Come on, man. Do we have it? In his last ten, we're gonna get tracking data for nine of them. That's good enough for me. It's a lot of rebound chances. But still only 10.8 rebounds. Contested rebound percentage is not great, right? And and Capella's been a pretty good at limiting that. If you look at him versus the um the Hawks here on courtside pal. For those of you that don't are not yet familiar, apologies to those of you who've heard me preach about it, but courtside pal is the GOAT in terms of trying to figure out uh who what we talk about when we talk about defense versus player position i don't it, player type is more important right this is, doesn't say player position it says player type uh because it does a great job of, of breaking up players by height weight mass shooting from where they score from where they shoot from where they play make from how much they play make and they're rebounding right where they are on the floor and that kind of stuff so um for the uh the, the points for jc if you look at him against atlanta pretty good in terms of scoring right this is where he scores from maybe i, I should be giving him a little bit more credit because he's also a really good rebounder it looks like against this team yeah, he's been he's been the exact prototype of dude that that uh, is pretty pretty successful against this Atlanta squad. Um, so maybe that is something you want to look at a little bit more. But I, I've stayed off him. The rebounds are there. Like it's just with the, the contested rebound percentage is bad for him. And he's gotten rebounds against. Look at who he didn't rebound against. They, you got to be a bottom tier team rebounding wise um, in that case. And I would guess that Walker Kessler wasn't in for a lot of those. Or obviously we we don't have um, Lowry in, which is good for him. But is Walker Kessler even on the report? No. Is he going to be over? I can't even do stuff with him. He just doesn't play enough, man. So it, it's the weird, the weird random minutes at this point too that just make me go, I don't know. And I, I think this game's uh, an over as well. I played that, um, put that in the video if you guys were watching the uh, the first video that came out. So um, let's see. Uh, let me put that back up because we got what's up, get down classics. We got to put up the updated card here. So we got these are the two that we've added. Um, I do have, sorry, just to be clear, Jalen Duran under 11 and a half boards, Kelly Olynyk under six and a half boards. And then we have, uh, some stuff that I already looked at. I like Keontae. I'm staying away from, uh, John Collins. I mentioned, and I, I am staying away from Paolo Jay Suggs. If you don't want it, if you don't like his points, like I don't, the threes might could be there for him and you get good plus money for him to hit more than two and a half. That's basically a ladder play because FanDuel has it at two and a half over two and a half is, uh, plus plus one fifty, Right. So that's a, that's a really good juice for him to hit three, but. That means he's hitting three or four or three or five because I don't see him taking very much more than that with uh, Gary Harris out there to steal some of the minutes for him. He's only been playing about 27, 28 minutes, so we don't know about that. And quickly, under assists, uh, it, it, I would go under seven and a half before I go over, but the juice is gone on that bet. We have Gary Trent in the game now for them as well. And with and without Gary Trent is going to be a big deal for him because there's nobody else that you feel comfortable getting shots up for Toronto other than IQ or Gary Trent when he's in there with him. So there's the possibility that they pass well together and make that work. Um, but let's look at uh, a couple more here. We got Michic. I, I did look at him already. In fact, I do have um, something up for Michic already that I can just show you right here, which is uh, the bet that I already did place for him. So you can see why. 
Phoenix bad versus PNR ball handlers. We talked about that, and that's going to continue to be the case. That's why we took Derek White last night, got over four and a half, uh, and escaped with him when he got that last one in the fourth quarter. Uh, and then this is th what they do poorly. They, they Phoenix, if this is how you're looking to fade them, who's the pick and roll ball handler on the other squad? That you're get, that's the bottom ten defense against pick and roll ball handlers, limiting points. That's really what we have to go on. And if you look at Micic in courtside pal, it's crazy how good his player type is because of where he's staying, right? Like where does he live? And he lives above the break. He lives uh, in the pick and roll with uh, basically at this point, it was Grant Williams doing it a lot. And, and now it's you're getting a little bit more uh, of, of Brandon Miller running that action with him, too. Uh, but Brandon Miller has not figured out quite what to do after he does set a screen. I'm going to be honest with you, other than pop. And everybody knows he wants to do that. So but you look at his scoring. Um, where did it, where did Phoenix go? Did I put points? Phoenix was bad. I was under the impression at limiting his scoring. But it's from, it's from his shot profile. It's where he's shooting from because they're bad above the break. They're bad at dudes that are coming off of the the screen, the ball screens, like we said. Playmaker stuff right here. You took at the assist that he's getting. So Michic assist might be a play. How many threes has he even been taking is what I want to know while we look at this Charlotte game real quick. Um, Come on, meow. Uh, Michic, has he been taking threes? Three and five, and I believe Trey Mann has played. That's what you got to look at because Trey Mann was in this last one right here, but he did miss. If he's got only a couple games where he gets two made threes, he's only done it twice with Trey Mann since they came over, uh, and that's been in a bunch of games. He hasn't even taken – he hasn't even made one in a number of them, so I, I can't really feel as good about that. The minutes have gone up, right? Like in the last five, let's let's just kind of dumb it down to the last five here uh, for, for Micic instead of going the last 10 because this is where he started to just take the role over as main point guard, right? And that's why the, the assist numbers are going to be a lot better. Even the points numbers without that because he is, uh, even without the threes, if you go down to threes down here, he took six last game, right? But he hasn't been taking that many. Uh, and that's what you look at. He's not the best three point shooter. He's good enough, but one and a half is about what he's averaging. Ten and a half shots in his last five. Um, is that still with? And that's with Trey Man. You see what I'm saying? So like with Trey Man, he's coming to coming around to actually getting the the volume up for for him. So with how good his type of player is against Phoenix, I do like Mijic more than anybody else in that situation. Uh, and so I'm I'm gonna stay away from the threes. And I'll just update the card to let you know that I like him more for the the points i'm not going to take the threes not worth it to me on that one uh and i am i already did take the points if you want the assist i get that uh, i believe the assists for him are decent juice yeah because if you take over for him you're getting minus 105 so hopefully you get good juice if you take him for to get over six and a half on something like underdog or prize picks as well i wouldn't be you know sacrificing any good odds to make sure i got him uh on those platforms to be honest with you uh assists okay but um points is where we're, where what we feel about this man right so we already took him at over 11 and a half i do think he's gonna if he keeps getting 10 to 11 shots up uh for the points that's just a really good bet right there so we got to feel good about that uh and then we have one more we talk about zoo right is it one more that we want to look at <clears throat> let's see duran yeah okay Diego, i like that too get down i hope we answered that for you let's last who who are you taking with that Atlanta game bro there's no way I could take Atlanta I who who is Atlanta to be giving points to somebody are you kidding me uh like Utah at home it doesn't really matter who plays for them they put up a buck 20 it's crazy to think about but if you look at uh Utah last 10 games right I think six of these are at home let me in fact let me just go to them uh their actual stats page real quick if we look at Utah and their stats page real quick just look at the last 10 games. They played six of those at home, right? And in those games, they're still scoring 120 points. What's happening? Like, how? how? In the last, oh, this is, oh, I, I did last six games. That's my bad. I'm going to do last 10. Well, this is a smaller sample size, and they're at a buck 17. Still point holds in the last three that they played, right? Let me look at them real quick on the, the hole here. 107 against one of the best defenses in the league. A buck 20 against Denver because they stopped trying. Buck 17 against Chicago. Uh, and this is still without Larry Markinen. Now, if he's in here, then I'm going to look stupid. But uh, yeah, there's still we're talking about Luka Samancic playing more minutes, right? Chris Dunn's out. We're talking about Bryce Sensabaugh at center. 
JC did play in that game. Jordan Clarkson, he's out in this one. But yeah, they just have one of the craziest home court advantages, right? The altitude is a big part of it, uh, but also just the way that they make shots at home. Uh, and, and they do play a little bit faster pace. So I, I cannot take Atlanta giving points on the road. That's absolutely incredible to me, even with the injuries that are announced. Like, and now this, uh, this is Jalen Johnson playing. That makes a huge difference now that I think about it. Because to answer that question, I do need to know if Jalen Johnson's playing. So let's see that real quick. Um, got the noties up for underdog. I don't have anything right for him. So that doesn't make me feel good. And yeah, look at this right here. Jay Suggs getting going to get his minutes eaten to a bit, a bit, even if Markel Fultz doesn't play as much, but Gary Harris in the starting lineup means he's probably gonna be playing a bunch. Uh, I don't think I have anything yet for, uh, Jalen Johnson. I would lean to him not playing, but you know, obviously we've all been wrong in the past. If Jalen Johnson and bogey are in there. Yeah, it's, it's tough, but like with Jalen Johnson, not in there, I, I'm, I'm, I, there's no way I can, I can take Atlanta at all. And, and I would, my favorite play from that game, uh, just to finish the point is that I would like, uh, to take the, the over in that, in that one, for sure. That, that was one of my best bets as well. Took the over in that game for these two, um, if you want Capella double double, yeah, I took Capella over, and that got that got bumped up as well. But I'll, I'll show you one more thing from the other video right here, and you can see that I took Capella uh, as one. Of, it was was one of my favorite bets. Come on over here, and then uh, it got juice because it was a uh, uh, ten and a half boards, and you got to take bad juice for that. But eleven and a half boards for plus money, if you can still get that, is a good bet for for me with Clint. There's nothing that I think Utah's gonna be, Utah's gonna be able to do to handle him. I don't think John Collins gonna be able to box him out. Uh, he's still going to get used in that pick and roll a ton. And you just look at the rebound chances when he doesn't have Jalen Johnson and uh, Onyeka Okongwu in there for him. We're talking about 21.3 rebound chances in those last three games without those two dudes. So if they're neither of them are in, then yeah, Capella is the play for sure. Double double for Capella. If you wanted to add that to something is something that I feel uh, for real NPR here. I appreciate the, the question there on Capella. So uh, I would run with that. If you, if you're interested in something there, I think somebody was asking me a minute ago about, What's up, no round brown? Zoo. Why, why was it so hard for me to forget Zubach? I love taking Zubach. Honestly, I usually am able to pinpoint when he's going to be used and when he's not. He's had a really, really good season, uh, especially on defense, which is why they've been able to keep him in the game so much. We want to know about his rebounds under, though, right? Was what we're talking about against this uh, New Orleans Pelicans team. And he has gone over under pretty frequently as of late playing really good teams down low. We got Milwaukee, Minnesota, then Chicago again, and that was more of a blowout. So I don't know if his minutes were super high. Uh, well, he played a lot in the blowout, but these minutes scare me for sure. Uh, if you want to take an over for Zoo, this is, I think it's a better under than over for sure off bat. If we look at how they've done against centers as of late for this Pelly squad, they gave up 10 to Jay Allen, who has become Hakeem Olajuwon at times this season. Capella boarded up hella against him. 10 i mean there's a couple of dudes getting over obviously drummond eight as the backup center bam only with seven against this team let's look real quick at how zubach matches up with um with our boys here why can't i even remember who this team is playing right now? i'm just drawing brain farts that probably means it's time to book it um right they're playing the pellies i just talked about it <laughs> all right for the pellies and how they limit this dude's type of uh position in terms of rebounds they're gonna be pretty good I'm assuming they're NOR instead of NOP for whatever reason, but they are 21st uh, and basically ninth best at limiting rebounds to Zoo's position. It's the minutes that scare me for Zubach uh, a ton. Let me just change this to Clippers real quick. And this, do I still have, yeah, last 10 games for them in the Clips. Rebound chances for Zoo's at 13 and a half for him to get nine. Not not great, right? Um, do we know we got hardened out? We said that. Do we have anybody else ruled out? Uh, do we know about Kawhi? That's something that I always got to wonder. Kawhi, we're not going to hear about until literally game time. You know that's the case, right? Um, oh, now we're getting the the Memphis uh, the the injury report from Memphis is just going to start blowing up my uh, Twitter notifications because they're just going to have twelve freaking dudes on that list. But uh, yeah, for, for, for Zoo, I actually do like that under a bit, to be honest with you. Let's look at the last seven defending centers for this squad for the Pellies. Uh, and they are, well, not they're giving up a bunch over the course of their last bit. We, we looked at who those players were, including Capella, who got a ton against them. So this is just the last seven games against centers. That is something that we don't know. 
Yeah, the, the Kawhi, Kawhi unders if he plays, right? Like Freesaw said, so we, we need Kawhi to get in the game so that we can get those unders to matter. Does he have those those under props available right now? I mean, let's see. Is it high? Back spasms, they don't play around, but we thought that was going to be the case yesterday, right? Michich good at 12 and a half. That's where I, yeah, 13 points for Michich. That's going to be right on the line, right? For him to need 12 is a really nice bet. I think the assist might still be good for Michich if you can, if you can get six and a half instead of the, the 12 and a half points. Might as well just combine them too. If you get 18 and a half PA for him, I think that's a great bet. Who's ever uh, J Dub asking about JW asking about Michich good at 12 and a half or no. That's where I lean with that is just what's the, what's the case uh, of, of the PA. Can you get the 18 and a half points and assists to put them together? Because he's going to do one of them. Uh, he and Trey Mann are, are, are starting the action there for, for this team more than anybody. Uh, Miles Bridges too, but uh, it scares me for Miles Bridges against a team that is good against small forwards with that, that Suns team. But, yeah, for me, just 12 and a half. That's a little bit dicey for me. Uh, I would take it with the points and assists if I can. Kawhi under bass bass because the bass bass make sense. But how did he play through that last night? This is just a man. It's like an enigma, bro. You cannot see what's going to happen with him uh, without Harden, though. I will say the play is usually over. So this is at 218 and a half bet down from 223 and a half. I definitely want to confer with some folks about what they think, to be honest with you um because they have a really good read but when Harden is out and now you're talking about Bones Highland let's look at the Clippers uh pace with and without James Harden this season on Stat Muse good old reliable yeah without that without him that pace just goes up it's just been the case all season so I would lean over if Bones is going to be in that we need Kawhi though this team is going to be awful on defense without Kawhi and we know that this Pelly's team how crazy is it that this Pelly's team has snuck into the top 10 in both offensive and defensive rating as of the however long ago right they were okay they just got okay still tied for 10th in terms of offensive rating and that D rating is still sixth best so they have uh gotten much better on offense but it's really all that Trey Murphy stuff for sure Trey Murphy the third has come uh back from injury with a complete vengeance if you look at his numbers as of late it's really just when he goes he goes bro that's really what it is and that's why his average is going to be right around what's his, his average points in his last 10 is going to be uh where'd that go what's he scored in the last 10 Help me out here. 17 and a half. It's right there. My bad. 17 and a half points in his last 10. Uh, and he's actually gone under this number, though, six out of 10 times because he's when he goes off, he goes off. And it's those threes, right? It's just how many threes is he making? If you look at the threes number here, it's going to be a complete direct correlation to when he gets over and when he doesn't. It's just that simple. Uh, it's, if he's making threes against this Lakers team, then you feel pretty good about it. And the corner three is something you can get off against the, uh, not the, the Lakers, the Clippers, against the Clips as well. So uh, I lean under for the Zubach uh rebounds with Kawhi not out there though that might be a bit scary as well let me just do that before i dip on y'all real quick so zubach uh with and without Kawhi this season you know we're gonna get some decent um numbers here for him so without Kawhi, he goes up to 10 and a half boards gets another minute in the game as well so that they have another big man. So if Kawhi is out, I don't know that I like that under the other thing about Kawhi is you don't know if he's going to come in and not play that many minutes uh, because of the back spasms to that point as well. So I might could be off of that one. Uh, I'm not going to see it yet, but uh, appreciate it. Go see Mike. What's up, man? Uh, Booker over 24 points. No round Brown. Let's see that real quick. And then I might be, um, piecing out here because we got to get some bets in before these games. I still haven't gotten Duran or Kelly Olenek in on my card. These are the updated bets that we added to the card. Um, and I'd still have Michich points and Keontae George. I have points and assists combined for him as well. So let me put him on there. Cause I actually didn't give him out in the video earlier, even though I bet it. So let me get, make that clear and I'll, I'll update this card one more time. I'm going to put Keontae over here instead of over there. Keontae and a nice bottle of Keontae. All right, Keontae George, we're taking over 25 and a half PA. Love my under rebounds best. I'm not going to lie. I might get a little like uh, rebound parlay in there for those two dudes to go under their boards because you get some pretty good juice on both of them. One's 108, one's minus 105 uh, in terms of the, the the boards props for Kelly O. Here's the updated card. Uh, and Zubac, yeah, I think Zubac you wait on it, all right? If you see, if you see Kawhi out, I think you can't take, you, you avoid the under for Zubac. If you see him in, you just got to hope that Kawhi actually gets out there and plays. So, um was there another there was one more in there that i wanted to see before i dip 
Did I get it? No, I think I got it. So I, I appreciate y'all. I'm going to, I'm going to roll out with that. I will say subscribe to the page if you would. Uh, it's super helpful. As you know, I, I've had this screen up, but we'll, we're good here. All right. We're going to be back uh, tomorrow. I'm going to be on what's his name stream. Kyle uh, Kerms. If you've seen that yet, let me get this out of here. Kyle Kerms uh, is a dude that I, I have a ton of respect for and his YouTube page as well. So I'm going to be on there talking about stuff tomorrow at 4 PM Eastern for his live stream. Probably going to avoid a live stream for tomorrow here with me. Hit me up. If you have questions, I'm looking to get the discord going because I do love the conversation we're having in here. Appreciate you all parlay vu. Appreciate you. Free sauce. Uh, all that stuff. Uh, can't, well, let me see what Diego said. Can't trust the Suns big three and try to predict whose game it's going to be. I agree. The Suns are good on no rest. I will say that they have like a top 10 defensive rating on no rest. They they're decent after a loss they're not great if that prop uh that line stays really high for chicago or chicago for charlotte i would definitely be uh leaning charlotte before i hit the suns it's at 10 and a half i like 10 and a half a bit more for the hornets than i do the suns but we'll see if they go off uh in this one it's, it's hard to predict someone asked me about booker i know i said i was dipping i i, I can't i can't get away from it De devin booker on uh, no rest this season once you put something in my head like that now i'm like latched on i'm like a dog with a bone over here uh d book on no rest not the best numbers is it obviously played some pretty good defenses on no rest but he's also played some pretty bad ones he did go off against brooklyn he loves playing golden state you know that i mean he's gone over that number about half the time with one two three now three out of one two three four five six seven eight three out of eight times isn't a great number um if you look at how he plays look at this you got me going getting right into it this is it i, I swear to god devin booker go how does he do against this uh against this charlotte i mean charlotte's bad right <laughs> so like everybody's gonna be scoring against him but if you look at they're not that bad at defending the uh the pick and roll ball handler it looks like whoa d book as a shooter doesn't get points against charlotte interesting i don't well first i was never gonna take him uh, but that is a good fact to know uh if you uh, he's a point guard for sure yeah, they, they limit assists in general, but it looks like he, he might be able to get some against them. I, yeah, I would I would say I'm off of the the Booker stuff as far as the uh, the points go. If you like it, I, I, you know, not not gonna see, not gonna tell you uh, that it's the worst bet in the world. But the fact that they don't they defend uh, the pick and roll ball handler and they don't give up points to his exact player type, yeah, uh, that's where I'm at. So yeah, what up, Doctor Rich? I see you over there. I appreciate you jumping in. Yeah, we'll, we, we'll put the the final bets here in the comments as well, y'all. So this is the updated card with uh, the bets that I have that were not in the video from last night. Definitely want to make sure you check that out as well as I've got four bets in that one, including some totals that I didn't go over here with you. So check me out on Kyle Kerms tomorrow. It's really easy to find the SUAS. He's the SUAS network uh, on, on YouTube and everywhere else that he is. So I'll be on there tomorrow. I will have a video either tonight or early tomorrow morning with player props. Hopefully we get some lines out for props for tomorrow early and I can get that video out to you early uh, and then we'll have that up for you. So keep following along. I appreciate y'all. Subscribe to the page if you would. I keep saying that. Like the videos. It's super helpful. We're going to be back with college basketball all next week as well, by the way. Going to be just like throwing a ton of that stuff as the tournament gets going with Oaks. UEFA Champions League is coming back. So we're going to be getting that as well. Till I see y'all next. Happy betting.